Well, the uh, capital city was formed in 1963. Uh, we play traditional Scottish music and tunes not only that are traditional that have been around for sometimes hundreds of years, but even tunes that have been written uh, fairly recently. And they're still writing music for the bagpipes. It's, it's not an easy instrument to play. It does take a lot of, uh, of um, breathing control uh, because you've got to blow up the bag. You've got to keep the pressure steady to maintain the tone so you don't go flat and sharp or cut out. Uh, it's got four reeds as nine notes. So uh, that's what that's all you play is nine notes on a bagpipe. Oh, you mean you ready? What? Uh, playing with a bagpipe band is maybe a little bit different than playing with uh, other kinds of instruments because you all want to be playing exactly the same thing. So instead of sounding like six bagpipes or ten bagpipes, you sound like one. Well, we generally uh, have trouble finding places to practice. You know, as the bagpipe band is quite loud. Uh, right now, we're quite fortunate. We, we uh, practice in the basement of uh, St. James Episcopal Church on Calumet and East North Broadway. Uh, it's, it's a wonderful place to practice, but the basement is uh, all hard surfaces, low ceilings, and uh, very resonating, shall we say. Uh, it, it, it makes tuning quite a bit more difficult than it should be. And initially, what we try to do is, is uh, get the chanters all tuned to one another. Um, we've got a very good uh, class of Highland dancers, uh, and we're one of the few bands that actually has dancers with the band. Highland dancing is a traditional type of dance that, was, um, that is traditional to Scotland. Um, Highland dancing is a little more, more ballet, where Irish dancing would be more a tap nice based. And then we also use our arms, and Irish dancers keep them straight down at their sides. You can start taking Scottish Highland dancing generally as early as four, um, and then you can dance until your body won't do it anymore. Um, our four-year-olds and any beginning students, no matter what age they are, start out with their basic Highland fling, which is the very first dance that they learn, and then potty bas and high cuts would be the next thing, which are a part of the sword dance. And that's what, tonight we'll definitely be doing the fling and the sword. The fling was initially a recruiting dance for the army. Um, the sword dance is a dance that was done before battle or after battle. And depending on whether it was danced before battle or after battle, the story is a little bit different. So before battle, you would place your sword on the ground and dance your sword dance. And if you did not touch the sword while you were dancing, then you would be victorious. But you didn't actually know if you were going to be victorious because you don't know what the other side's dancer did, whether he touched or not. So you still had to go to battle. Um, if you danced it after, it was the dance of victory, and you would take your opponent's sword and lay it on the ground and place your sword over top of it, and then dance a, a victory dance. It's such a fun thing to learn and to be a part of this community and these bagpipers and these dancers and these teachers that it's so enriching in so many ways. So come and join us.